Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be showing you how to put together an 8 directional player movement script and animations for your top down game. As you can see I have a blank Unity project and I'm going to go ahead and set it up with just a few uh, things that I like to have set beforehand. So I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see I just added my basic folder structure that I always like to have. I added our player art and I added a script I made beforehand for the eight directional movement. So first thing you'll want to do is create your player game object. You'll also want to go ahead and add a sprite for your player. Now I'll go into our player art Mine happens to be 32 pixels per unit. It is multiple images and it is pixel art. So I will choose filter mode, point no filter. And I'm going to turn the compression to none and apply that. Then I'll go to the sprite editor. And I want them to have the pivot at the bottom of the sprite. Automatic's fine for me. So I'll go ahead and slice up my images and click apply. Now I can go to my sprite and choose one of my player images. Now we can go over to our player game object and I am going to add my player top down script for movement in eight directions. And I'll go ahead and open this and we can go over it. All right, this script is not very long. So if you wanted to freeze the video right now, you could take a look at the whole script and make sure you understand it. And if you wanted to copy it, go right ahead. Um, but I'll go over it here in a second. All right, so the first uh, component we have here is a rigid body 2D. Second one is an animator, a float for our movement speed, an, and a vector 2 for our movement input. In our wake function, we're going to be grabbing the rigid body component as well as the animator component for the game object this script is attached to. In our update function, we have a move function and an animate function. For the move function, I store the horizontal and vertical inputs from get axis raw and I do a check to see if they are both equal to zero and then I stop the player movement and I return to the update function and the reason I do a new vector 2 here for zero zero is one to stop the movement but then also make sure that movement input does not get changed so then later on our animations don't change. Um, but if these inputs are not zero, then we would change our input to whatever they are. So a new vector two with the horizontal and vertical positions or horizontal and vertical inputs. Our rigid body velocity will then be set to our movement input multiplied by our movement speed multiplied by time dot fixed delta time and this makes sure that the animations and movement speed and everything runs at the proper time on all devices uh, and our final function here is animate so for our animator we're gonna have to set floats for our movement X and movement Y input so we're just setting the movement input dot x and movement input dot y for movement x and movement y and with that all said let's go back to unity and make sure we can set everything up so it works with this script so first thing we need is a rigid body 2d I'm going to turn off gravity set collision detection to continuous Freeze the Z rotation, so if we bump into anything, we're not rotating our player. And I want to set our movement speed to something like 150, 
Now I just need an animator. And I'll right click over here, add the animation tab. And I'm going to go ahead and create our first animation, which I will call player up. Click the record button, go to the sprite and choose our player looking up sprite. And now our player looks up whenever this animation is played. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but for all of the other animations we need. So the seven other animations for eight directional movement. All right, and now I have all eight of our player animations. So I'm going to go ahead and open the animator window. And we can go ahead and clear out all of these animation clips here because we're going to be using a blend tree. So I'm going to call this blend tree eight directional movement. And now I'll select our blend tree here, change it to simple 2D directional movement. And I'm going to go ahead and select our parameters and I will add a new float called movement X and a float called movement Y and set our parameters to movement X and movement Y and I will get rid of this blend component. Now that we just have our movement X and movement Y, let's go over here to movement or to motion and we can add a new motion field and we will actually want to add eight of those. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now that we have eight of our motion fields, we'll want to spread them out evenly. So I'll go ahead and set this first one at one, zero, then one, one, then zero, one, then let's see, negative one, one, negative one, zero, negative one, negative one, one, negative one, and zero, negative one. So now you can see all these dots are evenly spaced from the red dot. And we can go ahead and add the appropriate animation here for the correlating position. So for example, right here, with the one and the X and the zero and the Y, the player should be moving to the right. So I'll go ahead and add our player right animation to that motion. For our next one, it looks like the player would be moving up and right. So I'll go ahead and add that anim animation. And I'll go ahead and fill the rest of these out too. All right, and with all of our animations added in, you can see our blend trees filled out nicely here and everything is evenly spaced. So we should be able to transition between each of these pretty seamlessly. And as you can see down here in our animate function, this is where we're setting our input. So we're getting our input from our horizontal and vertical uh, get axis raw inputs. And then we're setting our movement X and movement Y parameters based on those inputs. So that's what feeds into here and this is what determines which animation should play. 
So <clears throat> now if I click play, we can see how it's working so far. And if you move around, you can see you do have eight directional movement. But it doesn't look so good uh, just because it's just swapping out a sprite. So what I like to do is I typically add another layer on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this name to the movement layer. And I'll add a new layer called bounce. Move that on top. This one has a, this layer at the top always has a weight of one. So I'm also going to make our movement have a weight of one so that both of these animation layers play. And now I can go to our player and create a new clip, a new animation, and I'm just going to call this bounce and I can click on our record button, go to the sprite, I'll go to this 30 second mark or the 30 frame mark, and I'm going to make our Y squish down to 0.9, scale out our X to 1.1 so it's a little wider. You can see what we're doing here. Adding a little squish, then over here at one, I'll go ahead and reset it so it looks normal. And I want it to be a little faster, so I'll put it at 45. Now if we watch, we can see we have a nice little bouncing idle animation, so that looks nice. And since it is on our bounce layer, and our bounce layer goes directly into our bounce clip, that should play over top of our animations for our movement. So now we should have a little bit of a bounce in our step when we move our player around. So let's take a look at that. And just like that, we got ourselves a little lively eight directional character. Now, of course, this process can get a little more complex with the more animation frames you want in there for the movement, uh, but this should give you a nice baseline on where to start. If you liked this tutorial, leave a like on the video and leave a comment down below for what I should do next, and feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much.